couple of days ago, Crime Think published the pamphlet Bounty Hunters and Child Predators Inside the FBI Entrapment Strategy. The four-page document outlines tactics used by FBI employees to frame individuals, which is then leveraged for political gain to vilify entire groups of people and ideologies. Having long advocated for complete liberty, that is 100% freedom and 100% responsibility, where each of us is free so long as we don't initiate force, I am aware of many situations that fit the entrapment model described, where no one is acting in the wrong until an FBI employee infiltrates, advocates violence, and in almost every case supplies the money or ordinance on which the arrest and headline hinge, and through which another claimed usurpation of rights is justified. This scenario became a bit more real for me after I learned that a friend had been asked by an FBI employee to wear a wire. This episode of Cop Block is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Yesterday, just before 4 p.m., Rich Paul, an activist known for his advocacy for self-ownership, was picked up by Keene Police employees, ostensibly on a warrant. Rich, Rich was brought to the Keene Police Department and led into an interrogation room where he had an exchange with a man who identified himself as Phil. Phil inquired where, where Rich had been immediately prior to the arrest. Rich said, at the club, and Phil gave the address of the Keene Activity Center. The Keene Activity Center, or CAC, is one side of a duplex that's billed as the community center, heart of operations, and meeting space utilized by liberty-oriented individuals based in Keene. The CAC is a comfortable environment to be yourself among friends working in concert to advance the peaceful evolution. Phil asked Rich to return to the CAC wearing a wire and to share with those present a completely fabricated scenario that he'd been snatched up for a crime that he hadn't committed. Rich was told by Phil that he wanted to see who questioned the story and at what length. Rich invoked his right to remain silent and noted his desire to speak with his attorney before deciding how to move forward. Phil gave Rich his business card, on which he tried to scratch out his last name, though it was still readable as Christiana, and told him to keep their exchange confidential and to be in touch by 5 p.m. today, May 31st. Instead, at 5 p.m., Rich's attorney gave Christiana a call, and myself and others are working to make this situation transparent. After all, we have nothing to hide. No one at the CAC advocates for violence. A quick Google search turned up Christiana's bio. He notes, I am a CPA accountant by education from Rutgers University in New Jersey. I have been a special agent with the FBI for 20 years, I was stationed in the Boston field office as a new agent in 1992. I spent five years as an operator with the FBI hostage rescue team at Quantico, 96 to 01. I'm currently assigned to the New Hampshire Joint Terrorism Task Force at the Bedford, New Hampshire Resident Agency as a special bomb technician. I'm also responsible for security issues, security related issues at the Manchester Boston Regional Airport and Seabrook Nuclear Power Plant. I've also served as the primary firearms and tactical instructor for the Boston field office. But there's more to this story. Back in 2005, Data Orwell share, shared on New Hampshire Underground, then the most popular form in the Shire, that he had received a call from Phil Christiana, who sought to maintain a dialogue. Data Orwell wrote, He says he wants to have lunch with me, or something along those lines, in about a month. I assume he is trying to do intelligence, find the next Tim McVeigh, or determine for sure that this movement is the wrong place to look. This is not something I object to in theory, but I do feel uncomfortable doing anything that would cost taxpayer dollars, such as sitting down to lunch with these guys for an hour at taxpayer expense. Also, longtime Shire-based journalist Dave Ridley, who, based on his entertaining and informative videos, has gained a following from many in the area including Leos who have personally told me that they watch and respect his channel, noted that he too had been visited by Phil Christiana. He wrote about their exchange. My experience with him was that he was more or less polite and professional but creepy. He came to the same Keen house where I lived there to learn more about Russell Canning's plan for civil disobedience at Manchester Airport's TSA checkpoint. That was in 2005. He also requested to have lunch with me and indicated, not in so many words, that he wanted me to be an informant. I told him I'd be interested in having lunch, but would report everything we said to the public. He declined to interact with me after that. In early 2001, Christiana visited the home of then keen based activist Kurt Hoffman. After Christiana identified himself as Phil, who worked for the FBI, Hoffman shut his door and declined to talk. 
Christiana later called Hoffman twice from a number determined to be a cell phone, 603-365-8098, and visited Hoffman's dad in Massachusetts, during which time he inquired about his knowledge of activities in Keene. Later that summer, after the conclusion of the Porcupine Freedom Festival, an annual week-long event held at Rogers Campground that was attended by over 1,200 pro-liberty people, FBI employees stopped by and questioned the owners about those who had attended, though they claimed to be concerned most about the vendors selling alcohol without a license, something that's not part of the FBI's purview. A couple of months back, Brad Jardist, who himself had worked in law enforcement before quitting his job to, due to his unwillingness to arrest those who use marijuana medicinally, confided that he too had been asked to sit down with an FBI employee. That conversation was focused on learning who at the CAC advocated the use of violence. In no uncertain terms, Jardis told the Inquisitors that such a line of questioning was totally off base because no one at the CAC advocated such things. More recently, after friend Josh Nielsen was picked up for not checking in with his probation officer as dictated, he was questioned along a similar vein. When caged at the Cheshire County Jail, Josh was asked if he was aware of anyone advocating violence that was associated with the CAC. He laughed at such a statement, knowing full well that it was completely without merit. Should we be surprised by Phil Christiana snooping around here in Keene, or that of his colleagues' similar actions in other areas, where individuals freely associate and advocate for an alternative to the system that today bestows upon some extra rights? No. In fact, it is to be expected due to the perverse incentives inherent in the institution for which they work. The way Christiana and other employees of government agencies justify their taxpayer-funded salaries is to create issues where none exist something economist Bob Higgs has deemed to be the ratchet effect. Manufactured and trumped up incidents and arrests are given as justification for a greater police state at the expense of your rights. There's no internal check on government as it exists today. No matter the leadership, the trend is always to grow in size and scope simply because the goods and services its actors provide, in this case law enforcement, are provided in a vacuum, absent any mechanism for real accountability. Services rendered are either unwanted, such as victimless crimes, or done inefficiently. The Crime Think write-up mentioned at the beginning of this video seeks to instill in readers the need for a security culture to mitigate risks. The best way that can be done, in my opinion, is to be transparent, to not let threats scare you into complacency or even worse, partnerships with those seeking to create manufactured incidents especially if you're not doing anything wrong, and that's the purpose of this video. As the size and scope of the liberty-oriented community grows in Keene and around the world, those who seek to maintain the status quo are rightly worried, not due to threats of violence, at least not from this community, but due to the fact that the bad idea on which they subsist is being seen and is thus eroding. I know I, and the people with whom I choose to associate, diverse as they are, advocate peaceful tactics. Freekeen.com, a group blog where some who patron the CAC blog at, has the tagline, Peaceful Evolution. That's not just a phrase, but an idea, and ideas have consequences. It's not about a revolution, violent or otherwise, as whatever form that takes, it still revolves around the bad idea of a leader, of an authority outside yourself, who claims the right to be able to do things simply based on their title. It's about an evolution, moving past the outdated concept of looking to somebody else and instead looking to yourself to govern yourself. I'm glad Rich and others approached by Christiana have spoken up. Just like in the schoolyard, it's the bullies, those who initiate force and who act in the wrong, who rely on threats to censor their misdeeds, knowing full well that were their actions known, they would not be tolerated. Transparency is key. The curtain is being pulled back and many are seeing that the emperor wears no clothes. Authority once unthinkingly granted is being retracted. To me, the means don't justify the ends. The means are an end in themselves. Live ac not according to fear, but according to your own conscience. Be led by love. Be responsible for your actions. That's how we create the freer society that we want to live in.